Welcome back, everyone, to Tornlands here on Casters and Castles, tormented by gnomes, your game master, joining you after the break. Once again, we, of course, have K-Wing Cast, Marcel Howard Jr., and Tiberius Oddly. They are in the middle of an unexplored, deep, and ancient forest. Three folks used to the trappings of civilization, or the finer, if not the finer comforts in life, then at least being surrounded by a community that can take care of them, now left only with each other and an unexplored and potentially hostile wilderness. In their first day here in the Tornlands, our heroes have started to expand out and explore from the mysterious stone circle in which they awakened, entering the ancient forest, scaling up a slope, and finding shelter and sort of a overgrowth of plants for the night. They've settled down. There was some sharp words as they deal with their new surroundings and their completely formerly unknown compatriots. But earlier that day, they discovered the corpse of some unidentifiable creature that had been stripped down to the bone by flesh-eating beetles, which they attempted to harvest, because they can be useful later. And now, unbeknownst to them, something else has found that beast, that corpse, and is on its way towards them. That being said, I am going to go ahead. It does not come upon you in the night. Let's see. Let me check the time. So, you... I have to do a conversion here because I've been keeping track of time, relative time from when you got here instead of objective time. Oh, no. They're the same. Okay, cool. After you've had a good rest, the alarm spell does not go off. And you all find yourself rested. Uh, Tiberius, you've got a full rest before the sun even rises. It's kind of the middle of the night. You've all, I mean, you can sleep in if you feel like it, for sure. You're muted. That means I get plus one XP. <laughs> we still have some firelight. Uh, the fire went out by this point. It was again not a not a proficient user. You did a good job of of setting it in the first place, but it wasn't a, like a neatly made thing or anything like that. Okay, then as I wake up, since the sun's not up yet, I'm gonna get a light a torch with my tinder box and my torch, and just kind of poke my head out the cave. Give me a perception check, please. Twenty-one. Okay. As you emerge from, it's not so much a cave as it is just like a place where the trees kind of grow really close together. Lighting the torch. Careful. Not to set the forest on fire, though it seems pretty verdant. The wood is definitely not dry, which is why you, the fire went out. You only could find so much dry firewood. You look out through the, the flickering torchlight, and just at the edge of the light in the depths of the forest, a massive set of horns looms in the undergrowth. Eyes reflect the light, staring right at you. Um, guys. Oh. I, I very slowly lower the torch. Mm -hmm. Not not to the ground, but like to be more in front of me and away from my body. and Just so I don't see what's directly in front of me as terrifyingly. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's something out here. Oh, it wasn't a dream. Oh. I done told you that. Did you need me to pinch you too? No, no. It's fine. Don't worry, the oh, alarm shh, shh, shh. There's something out here. Is it moving at all? As you turn again at it, it makes a noise. And charges towards you. 
Uh, oh no. Roll a d6 for me real quick. <laughs> and then, okay, a five. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, Immediately behind it, another one also charges out at you. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And I would like all. everybody to please roll for initiative. And at some point, I'll have the combat music installed on this one, I promise. Okay. A 13. What else we got? Seven. Oh, uh, 21. Yeah, all right. And the things in the woods a 15 total. Okay. Arton, you hear these things making these noise and they start rushing towards you. Especially, specifically towards the one who bears the torch. Towards Jet. What do you do? You are just waking up. If you have armor, it's not equipped. If you've got weapons, they're not drawn. What do you want to do? Uh, immediately, I would like to look at the one to uh, look at the one that is closest or the one that's like mm -hmm. leading the charge. And I would like to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. I whisper a discordant melody uh, and the target must make a wisdom save. Okay. I will now roll a wisdom save. That's a nine. I'm guessing that's a failure, right? My saving 30C is 13. Okay. Excellent. Roll 3D6 for psychic damage. All right. Um, Sixteen, <laughs> and as well, um, and must immediately use its reaction if available to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Uh, it does it not move do into that. obviously dangerous ground. It does not do really? that. As it charges forward, it instead makes a horrifying screeching sound and then just breaks its stride and starts rolling towards you, lifeless. And a very dead deer bursts from the oh, undergrowth. No. Oh, no. <laughs> what did you do? It was just it was a like, deer. It was, it, was, it was like running at us. You know, when you whispered in my head earlier, that scared me. So maybe that's what happened to it. Did the other deer run off at this point? <laughs> uh, no, it's still charging directly towards Jet. To me, towards, towards Jet or towards? No, oh, apologies, towards Taylor. Okay. So, it was your action to cast that spell. You're prone when the combat starts. You can use half your movement to rise up if you want, and if you have a bonus action, you can use it. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I would like to use half my movement to. Uh, get out of a prone position mm -hmm. and uh, oh do I have any bonus actions uh, inspiration oh. um, opening back up your stream and that you. it is um, yeah I would like to I would like to cast bardic inspiration on on my bit on our on my businessman friend <laughs> and I would like oh, to say and <laughs> I go fulfill your promise protect us I'll do my best but they're just deer <laughs> and as you say that it is now the, the living deer's turn and it charges towards Taylor who is not prone because you were on you were awake, you riz, rose up and everything, you've got the torch in one hand, 
and nothing else as far as I know. Not in my hands, no. And it lashes towards you and tries to bite you. A ten. You said a, ten? A ten, yes. Uh, my, my AC is sixteen. All right. It's attempting to nibble at your, just to like bite your arm, but at best, all it's doing is snapping at the air around you. And uh, that's thing. all it does. It's your turn. It's Taylor's turn. <clears throat> I would like to grab my short sewing needle with the base lard, uh, basil lard. Mm -hmm. How's that actually pronounced? We'll get an audible on that down the line. <laughs> and I'm going to attempt to mercifully slit this thing's throat. Okay. Roll to mercy kill. <laughs> Seven. It's, you know, it's sort of nipping at you and you're trying to stab at it. Just the two of you, it start, <laughs> I like to imagine that when the scene starts, it's got this ominous music and you see these red eyes at the edge and then they charge forward and the magic unleashed and then it's just a deer and the music just stops and it's just trying to bite you and you're like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> camera completely changes from the cinematic shaky cam to just a flat side angle. Its nose is just nudging my wrist away from my dagger so yeah. I can't grab it yeah. quickly enough. Yeah. All right, Marcel, it's your turn. Uh, Jet, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I like these kinds of, these kinds of, uh, you know, systems. I'm, I'm going to try and uh, up another profession here. I'd like to try and calm the deer down. Mm. Okay. I'm going to treat that. Let's see. First off, let's see. Let's see if there's a rule for this in the Tome of Trades. Uh, otherwise, have your handle animal modifier on point. Okay. It's real good at a plus zero. So. <laughs> Honestly, I think this is going to be a plus zero either way. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll animal handling. Natural 20, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Describe how you pacify the angry ungulate. Or um, ungulate. I kind of... I, I roll and hop up to my feet kind of bouncily and I... Uh, jog over and I take um, Taylor's hand with the needle and I just kind of like push it to the side and I place my my simian hand in between the the um, uh, horns in between the horns of the deer and I just let my hand kind of wrap around its head and I scratch behind its ears. <laughs> relax, relax. It's okay. You know, normal deer noises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I will. Uh, let's see. I'll just stand there and, and kind of like scratch under the chin and, and, and pet it a little bit until it gets bored and, and decides to leave or whatever. Well, it decides to stick around. Cool. Un like. Unless you do something different. It is after it sort of like chills out, sort of had this what was I doing moment. It's going to peace out. It's, it's going to spring back into the undergrowth, glancing at its dead, I would say, compatriot for a moment and then sprinting away, unless any of you do something different. Well, we got one. I don't think we need to kill both of them. I think having a little good karma on our side might help. We just got to hope that one doesn't like go get its friends and come back for us. You're no saving private out. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you each gain five experience points. Yay. <laughs> Where does that go? <laughs> just from bad experience. Up. Yeah, just normal, actual class level XP. Your professions and your class are... There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Uh, you can run it where you just gain in your profession every time you advance in your class. But the exact thing that Marcel was saying, I like it where you can sort of dabble around and you could spend all day in town working on weapons. And that's not going to make you a level 20 fighter, but it could make you the best blacksmith ever. So mm -hmm. 
You do gain a little bit of combat XP, and you have a dead deer in front of you. What would you like to do? Also, it has begun to rain. A slight rain is drizzling down on all of you. That was one of those rolls that I had you do yesterday. So that fire wasn't out before, it's out now. I know. I'd like to place one of my, my other beaker that doesn't have a bug in it right now out mm -hmm. and catch some rainwater. Mm, okay. Uh, give me a d20 because it's sort of, you know, normally you have to have a very wide aperture to practically collect rainwater. We'll do, uh, well, I mean, it's a 13 plus whatever you say, so. Okay, a uh, 13 plus whatever. You know, again, I'm just going to call an audible on this and say add one flask of rainwater to your inventory and I'll look up what that does, if anything, later. Cool. All right, what about the rest of you? It's a refill for the water skin. There you go. I would like to try to get some of this deer meat. Okay. All right. You can spend an hour or one or more hours attempting to extract a specific raw material. So you're going for the meat right now. Cool. So go ahead and roll uh, 1d20. Natural yes. 20. Okay. Let me Did we all roll a 20 there. today? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on at all. <laughs> I think we all rolled one today. Well, I hope one of you guys can cook because I got some. I got some meat for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh no. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let me go over this again real quick. It costs an hour cutting all the meat off of it. You seed. So, so you are going to gain two. Three stacks of meat, raw meat. It weighs 15 pounds total. And there's definitely more on this deer, so you can continue to attempt to extract it, but uh, you, you got some extra with that attempt. Cool. What will Arton be doing during this time? I think trying to... Um in uh i'm trying to remember exactly what i have um i suppose uh trying to head towards the river to try and get uh the river that i found mm -hmm. yesterday more like a little more like a little stream and, but yes a stream mm -hmm. i found yesterday to try and refill our water skins all right <coughs> see whether that was okay you're going to the stream i'm just like <laughs> catching, catching literally spending the time chasing around raindrops you just walk over to the stream and you can refill your water skin yeah that's fine your water your water skin's re-upped no problem there all right that was the i told you i found a river this is more fun <laughs> Despite you do you, businessman, you do you. Despite the rain coming down, it becomes obvious that the sun slowly rises. The uh, the gray becomes a lighter shade as the sun starts to come up over the horizon, somewhere off in the distance. What will you do? I'm going to attempt to uh, cook our meat before it goes bad. Okay. All right. Let's see where that is. Yeah, I would like to start harvesting some of the hide. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do that one first because I'm already there. Okay. I was literally there a moment ago. Okay, here we are. So, to harvest the hide, it's another hour, and you're going to go ahead and roll... The D20. A two. Yeah, the, the you aren't skilled at this at all. You just kind of tore it apart. Like you were trying to, to carefully harvest it, but you don't have the right tools. You don't know where to cut it. Parts of it stuck together. With a needle. <laughs> it's, like, it's just 
It's just like sewing, right? So it should be fine. Um, you can try again, but every attempt makes it harder. And of course, that's going to be another hour. All right. Yeah. We are going to cooking, which I think is quartermaster. Let me see if I'm right on that. Or might be provisioner. And I do have my tinkerer's tools, which uh, you know they, they are basically a multi-tool that can be used for different things. So mm -hmm. if I can try and describe how I'm using it, I'm... You, you might, out. you might, as the DM, allow me to use my proficiency bonus. Yeah, I'll chef is part of attendant. Thank you. Where is that? Uh, bottom row, fourth one over from the left. On oh, the I nailed screen. it. Thank you. All right, cool. Do, 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 do. Prepare food, meat. All right, go ahead and roll a d20 to prepare that meat. Would I be able to add anything like a proficiency bonus with the Tinker's tools or no? Not at this time, but I'll take note of that for later to see if it's accurate. It's oh, just an hour of work. Oh, I, it, it might be an automatic success, but it's an hour of work. Go ahead. A total of 12 on their dice. Oh, 12. Okay, yeah. You've prepared all three of those uh, rations of meat. Nice. And that was, that that was supposed success. to be automatic. Cool. Cool. And if you eat them within one day, you'll have advantage on strength checks. And... Uh, you won't suffer exhaustion for one hour afterwards because it's high in protein. Nice. Wow. Nice. Well, I think Jet would uh, hungrily devour his his deer steak. Okay. For lunch. All right. Tasty. Assume it's getting, getting close to either breakfast or lunch. It's breakfast. Your venison for breakfast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Food, is, food is ready <laughs> for you all. Oh, wow, you did such a good job on this. It's not particularly seasoned, mm. but it's high in protein. You know, you kind of need some salt. Mm, beggars can't be choosers, Taylor. <laughs> Do you know where to find salt? Oh, yes. Uh, if you just walk for six hours straight north, you'll find it. Trust me. North. <laughs> I put my hand on Taylor's shoulder. I'm kidding. It's a bad joke. Oh. I, I thought the bard was the comedian. Mm. Would you say you're a comedian, Arthur? Well, I like to think of myself as a storyteller, but comedy can be just as good as ve good a vessel for that as a serious one indeed and uh, what did you you said you were a seamstress taylor well, yeah that's was my mom and my grandmom and her mom and her grandmom and so on and so forth i see and what kind of seeming did you do well, the the tribe we were all part of, they they were a bunch of warriors, and so they had, you know, shirts and s battle skirts and all that stuff. And so, you know, my dad and all the other warriors, they needed something to wear out into battle. And so that's what my mom and all her family ever did. And it, it's just been a, a sort of trade that's been passed down from generation to generation. I kind of like look up and down your person. Are you wearing one of those things that you have sewn? Uh, yes. Uh, Taylor is actually wearing this like Savannah color. It's sort of like camouflage for a wide open field color tones, mm -hmm. but it's like a tunic and a, a functional utility skirt, utility kilt or whatever. Um, jet kind of, uh, <clears throat> Picks a picks a bug off your shoulder and flicks it against the, the wall of the thicket, and uh, says, "It's nice." I should say. Well, thank you. You know, you if think... if we ever find any like fabric or anything, I can try to make you something or make. Uh, Lena, was it? Arton. Arton. Sorry. Arton. Sorry. I don't know why. No. No idea where that name came from. <laughs> so sprang from the yeah. ether. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I get these like visions of other people. 
Mm. Next time you're planning on trying to mm, gather the hide of an animal, um, maybe we can do it together, assist each other. That's not a bad idea. I always like help. Teamwork makes the dream work. Indeed, and I'm interested in... uh, uh, you see Jet kind of kneel down and, and peel a, a piece of the hide off of the deer. And he's just, he's kind of inspecting it. And he's just like interested in the makings of these kinds of things. I want to know what makes up a deer from the inside out. You know what I mean? It's kind of creepy the way he talks about it. <laughs> but um, he seems genuinely interested. And he wipes the blood on the floor. He doesn't like lick it off or anything. He wipes the blood on his finger on the on the floor of the thicket and kind of wipes his hands off. I mean, there there's the bones and the the meat and the skin. That's all there really is to it, isn't there? There's layers to you, Mister Businessman, isn't there? Hmm. What do you mean? I think you're more than you let on kind of raises an eyebrow and uh, stands up and brushes himself off. <clears throat> Isn't everyone? You, you only see a certain, uh, as you say, layer of someone that they want you to see? Perhaps, but some people, you sense they have more layers than others, more hidden more deep within them. Are you saying I'm one of those people? From you? No, you not hiding. Just multifaceted. Like that tinker's tool you have. A kind bit of, of everything. Around like a butter, uh, not a butter knife, a butterfly knife. But... A little bit of everything, don't you? I am person who is interested in many things. That is true. Curious, you might call me. As you are with the arts, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd lose my head if I were ever curious. Why do you say that? Because, you know, curiosity killed the cat. I point to the the lion head. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. So you do understand idioms and metaphors. <laughs> well, yeah, people call me an idiom all the time. I believe that's idiot. Why you gotta be? Why you gotta say it like that? I, for one, don't find you to be an idiot. Maybe a bit dull. Also, I don't I... like the word idiot. It's got all kinds of. Ugh. I think that's the closest we've ever gotten to a compliment from you, Mr. Businessman. Don't expect more. I won't. Otherwise, I'll hope that the curiosity gets you. And he kind of looks you up and down. Cat. Cute. He kind of smirks and goes back to stoking the fire. (laughs) He's actually setting up his... uh, his, he, in his alchemist supplies, he's got one of those metal frames that you can set a beaker on. So he sets that above the fire and just starts... The fire uh, has gone out. <laughs> from from set cooking? a new one. Oh, okay. Unless you um, have some other heat source. Do you think I could fashion my... Torch. One, more, one more time? I did have that torch that I lit at the start of the the deer fight. I don't remember how long they burned for, though. Well, this is one of those rain, games where huh? we're going to look up how long a torch burns. <laughs> <laughs> That's the style. Um, let's so let's take a look. If you, my... if you were proffering a different solution, I'll hear it, but I'm also going to look up how long a torch burns. Burns yeah. for one so, hour, so it would have gone out by, by the time I got done. Yep. Mark that off. Okay. Mark that off. But you could use a torch, I think, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. If I were to procure another fire and set my metal tray up above it, Mm-hmm. with a beaker on top, would I be able to theoretically keep the fire going longer because it now has a cover? Uh, possibly. Possibly. I would say I'm going to allow... I have no idea what the rules say, but I'm going to allow it. 
Uh, but you would need to spend some time collecting. It's raining right now, which is going to make yeah. it more difficult to start that fire, but less likely to burn the forest down, which is nice. So, mm -hmm. but it's going to take you an hour to get the wood together and and all that such. You want to give it that a shot? Probably, it probably is not worth it at this time. We don't really need a fire right now. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to attempt to, uh, to, we're sleeping in a thicket right now, right? Like a kind of a thickety grove. Mm -hmm. Um I'm going to try and reinforce that over the next hour and try and make it so that the rain doesn't quite um, seep in as much. Okay. That's got to be another profession here. The Outlander. Emer uh, emergency shelter. Build emergency shelter. Yeah. So go ahead and roll. Roll 1d20. 11. 11. It is good. It, yeah, you've you've made it so it's going to at least cut down. It's not going to be 100% waterproof, but it's definitely going to block sure. some of that there. It's a decent shelter. Okay. What about the other two? What do you want to spend this time doing? I can still try to harvest more of that leather, right? Yeah, you can. The DC goes up every time that you attempt it, successful or otherwise, but you can give it a shot. Well, uh. I'm going to try to get some more of this leather. Uh, use my, my dagger instead of the, the big needle this time. Mm -hmm. Do you think you might be able to help, Artur? I certainly help? could. Artan. I certainly will. Artan. All uh, right. Uh, I'm going to say for the time being, you each make a roll, and we're going to take the better of the two, as okay. tradition dictates. I always think it's more fun than just having one person get advantage. All right, Lena. 15. A 15. Okay. The DC did go up, but that is that is a success. So... I loosened it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You very much did. You very much did. So I think, if I'm reading this right, you get... One stack of hide, which weighs five pounds. So one unit of hide, five pounds of hide. Lord. And you can continue to harvest it and collect more until there's just it's gone or it's destroyed. Again, every time it's going to take another hour. You've got that shelter built. Another hour has passed. The light hasn't gotten too much better. And the rain is still, it's still light rain, but inside this shelter, it's not as bad. What would you like to do? The mountains loom in the distance. The grove, the, the clearing you awakened is somewhere out there. You know there's a forest nearby. Who knows what else is out there? But you could always spend more time collecting more things you need to survive. What would you like to do? Based on my knowledge of my own magic... Mm -hmm. Do I think that using the mending cantrip could help with uh, patching up our shelter to make it a little bit more waterproof? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be just about as effective as like going at it with like elbow grease? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be just about as effective because mending combines things that were once broken it doesn't put things together that aren't meant to be that weren't formally together it relies on sort of those echoes of sympathetic bonds to reunite them and what you're building right now it's not something that was ever put together great for patching up holes and stuff but not as useful for building new things good thinking though i like it that's a later spell that's a later spell mm -hmm. once we have civilization but. Indeed. Speaking of civilization, what would you like to do next? I think I'd like to take a page out of uh, your book and climb a tree, see what's around, <laughs> okay. see what I can see. You have a climbing speed, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Feet. So you're definitely going to succeed on that. All right. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me, please. 
Perception, perception. Uh, uh, at disadvantage because of the rain. Ah. I hate when that gets in my fur. The shelter keeps you uh, safe, but doesn't uh, make anything easier to see. All right. Um, I don't know how to roll disadvantage with a That's bonus. Fine. Roll twice. My perception is... Pull twice and take the better of the two, or the worst of the two. Five. Okay, and what are you looking for, if anything? You're not going to find... Uh, yeah, what are you looking for? <coughs> Generally speaking, I'm looking for signs of other life. I'm looking mm-hmm. for any noteworthy features or changes in the okay. landscape since yesterday from what... All right, roll described. 1d12 for me, please. Okay. Um, seven. seven. Okay. With the rain, it, it's you can't even really see those mountains that were rumored to exist to the west that... Uh, Jet saw earlier. We're not able to make out much right now. I climb back down the tree and I look disappointed, both from being sopping wet from the rain. I just look like a sad, wet cat and I just go, I don't say anything. It's, well, raining. I imagine that probably impedes your vision. Listen, I think our best bet right now is to just try and make this space livable for the moment until we can either find other people or find a better place to sleep. Thoughts? That that sounds all right with me. I agree, but I don't. I do think we should explore. We may find other people, or other people may find us. We just gotta hope they're friendly. I'm game for exploring if. That's what you all want to do. I think someone should probably stay back here. If you'd like, I can be that person. I mean, is there anything we got to protect right here other than the the drip. little house you made? Drip, drip. drip. <laughs> I mean, our food and um, things we've collected so far. Remembering where we're located. I'm quite good at carrying my life on my shoulders. Not very attached to any one place. I got my backpack. <laughs> and, and As so, do I. <laughs> Jet is very much a homebody. <laughs> you can actually see him continuously wringing out his blazer and putting it back on. Well, why don't you two go try and find some, mm, I don't know, people. And <laughs> I will continue doing what I do best, which is owning my crafts. All right, you enjoy your nap. <laughs> you underestimate me, Taylor. All right. Stay safe. Mr. Businessman, stay safe. You as well. If you come back to my corpse ripped apart, please don't eat me. No promises. Fair enough. At least they're honest. (laughs) 
And so, do two of our heroes set off? If so, where do they go and what will they do? I think we should follow the little stream toward the other water that we were told about previously. Okay, I do gonna, too. And lead you down the slopes into a more thick and ancient forest. As we're going through, I'd like to um, carry on what uh, what he was doing with uh, carving an arrow into the trees as we okay. pass. Trail the, marking? The, get a little bit of a spool of thread back home mm-hmm. to not cool. get lost, just to give us an idea. <coughs> okay. I've got thread if we need that. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be much of a, a seamstress without it. I th- Another idiom. I think that's the navigator profession to draw overland routes. And it's going to give you a plus one on discovery checks by other people. But no, you're not drawing it right now. You know what? I'll look at this up later, but I think this is going to be a navigator thing. All right. So you're going to make your way through. Going downhill is definitely easier. As you And roll a survival. And if not survival, just a flat profession check to find your way, to find the path. One specific one of us or both? Uh, Either. Both. We'll take the better of the two. Okay. 19. Yeah, you're able to find your way. You're able to navigate. Proceeding, when you follow that way, you're going to be heading towards the... Well, you can. do you want to go northwest or southwest? Mm, you know what? The, the stream goes northwest. We'll call that northwest. Okay. As you make your way down the slopes into the ancient forest... What's your passive perception scores? 10. Or 12, actually. Fantastic. Uh, thir- uh, 12. 12. Okay. All right. As you're making your way into the forest, you hear the light tapping of branches. Perhaps a little bit more than would behoove a forest so still, so deep, and amidst only the rain. What do you do? Do you hear that? Uh, a cast message. I do. Communicate through message for now. Quiet as we can. Uh, I still think I, I you're talking in my head. I pull out... Uh, I don't actually have a weapon out, but I'll... be looking around at where that noise is coming from. Roll perception check, please. To look I, get my bi- I get my big needle ready. Mm-hmm. All right. 1d20 plus 2. 9. Okay. You do not see the source of the noise. And as such, though you are wary... You do not see the threat before it emerges. As hideous bunches of twigs and the, the it's like the gnarled wood of the forest itself springs forward, reaching out and lunging upon you. Roll for initiative. Oh. Guys, we split the party. Oh. <laughs> Immediately split the party. Instantly have a fight. Ah, my rolls have gone... Uh, crap. Close. And uh, Marcel, while this is happening, go ahead and add a, a point of experience to the profession that you're working on. All right. The camera just cuts back and forth. I'll, I'll, I'll go to you occasionally. We can just see what you're in the middle of doing as they're getting torn apart by angry wood spirits. <laughs> it hasn't even been that long. So you just hear, oh, God. And just go like, mm, mixing potions. It's like, uh, yes, so 14. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One okay. Two. One, two, two. <laughs> so, 
I got a two on that. All right. So out from the underbrush, they spring upon you, the twig blights, four of them, small bundles of nasty, dry, gnarled wood upon two legs, flailing towards you. Were the two of you walking side by side? I would imagine. You... Okay. <coughs> <laughs> you know what? I know it. I I'd see you, I rolled a 1d2, but I'm just going to let it sit. That's fine. Looks, you know, I, I'm going to commit to the bet. Okay, so two of them are going to attack each of you. Actually, how intelligent are they? Uh, Yeah, they're not that intelligent. Two of them are going to attack each of you. So. Artan, what's your armor class? Uh, oh, with... Uh... With leather, uh, it's eleven plus my dex mod. Uh, uh, so I believe that would be fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Well, the first one scratches you with its claws, and you take two points of slashing damage, piercing damage. Actually, I say. The other one is just scrambling at your feet and misses. Taylor, the twig blights are upon you, attempting to drag you down and feast upon your sweet, sweet blood. Uh, unfortunately, they are both very incompetent, and neither of them succeed in any any degree whatsoever. Just like, ah. <laughs> All right. And after that brief interruption, it is Artan's turn. They have immediately rushed from the underbrush, indistinguishable in all ways from gnarly little shrubs, and are upon thee in melee. You had said you had not drawn a weapon just yet, right? That I did. Okay. What will you do? You did take a long rest, so you do have your uh, brain melting spell back. <laughs> oh, I have a few spell slots. Mm -hmm. um... You can kill a deer at will. <laughs> <laughs> power word kill deer my favorite <laughs> spell um uh combat combat power word bambi <laughs> power word childhood trauma <laughs> so true best power word bambi power word twitter baby. oh boy um hmm yeah, I guess I'll I'll ha I'll use my action to cast dissonant whispers again. Um, mm -hmm. Whispering a discord, uh, that same discord melody, um, okay. and on one of the creatures. Let's uh, see. What kind of will save a shrub. Is attacking me. <laughs> the shrub rolled an eight. Roll three d six psychic damage. Eight. Okay. A six and two ones. So what happens as it hears you and it has it has this like little face made of wooden stuff like, and it's almost as if a bubble is passing through a hose. You know, just it passes through its head and then the top just splits open like a blossoming flower, except with a hick his a sickening crack and splinters go in all direction as its mind cannot comprehend the horror. And it instantaneously dies. Oh, I'll never get used to that spell. All right. That was good. You have a bonus action, should you wish to use it. Remember that Bardic um, Inspiration only sticks around for 10 minutes, so it's up to you to decide if you think you need it now or not. I'm going to... I'm going to keep my... I'm going to keep my bonus action. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm not going to use it. Okay. Well, because I flipped a coin instead of rolling a D20, <laughs> it is now Taylor's turn. You, you said you'd drawn a weapon. You'd drawn one of your knitting needles, right? When you're Yes. My, okay. my big needle, which is the cutlass. Excellent. And I saw the one scratch Arton, and I'm 
pretty nervous as it is being mm -hmm. out in the wilderness and now these trees have just completely thrown off my day so mm -hmm. i would like to rage oh okay but rage as a bonus action what how does uh how does taylor's rage manifest what does it look like for those nearby well at at present she she hasn't had or they haven't really had a lot of experience with their uh anger management so right now it's just like a big vein bulging on their forehead <laughs> just like when your mother scolds you when you're a child mm. and they lunge at the other twig blight that was on top of Arton. okay and the two of you were adjacent and in the absence of a battle mat i'm gonna say no attacks of opportunity you're all close enough I imagine that if you knew them, if you if you have the the mother vein in the forehead, if you knew their middle names, you'd be shouting them out. <laughs> All right, that is. Just Give me an attack. A fifteen. That is definitely a hit. They've got slightly tough bark and such, but no, that's not enough to stop them. Roll me that damage. Yeah, I know. Weapon stats on this D4 piercing. Okay. And a plus two for being angry. Yeah. That's enough to, to crack this thing open with a single very angry knitting needle strike. Or tailoring needle? Would it be knitting? Would it be sewing? Sewing. A sewing needle. Stabbed. All right, two, the two that were attacking Arton are destroyed, leaving the two that were ineffectually squabbling at your legs. And you I used an action and a bonus action. Anything else? I interject myself between these little twigs and Arton. Okay. And That's that is good. when a larger blight, a needle blight, lopes from the other side of the clearing directly approaching Artan. Despite your attempts to attack from the, defend from the front, the attack comes from the rear as it lopes in and flings needles, firing a hail of needles at Artan. Uh, uh. A 16 to hit. That will hit. Back, 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 for nine points of damage. Oof. We're only level one. Arton falls unconscious. Oh, stars. But the camera cuts back over to a moment in that dramatic as we see Arton falling to the ground with blood streaming from the wounds. And now we come back to the shelter. What do we find Jet in the middle of? Oh, no. Uh, Jet is um, analyzing with his goggles. Uh, he's taking his bifocals and flipping down the, the magnifying pieces and he's slightly moving the twigs on the um, reinforcements that he made and he's going to try and update either his outlander or whatever profession that is okay so you're not working on alchemy you're working on your wilderness survival skill we'll go ahead and take a note of that and i expect after a few more of these we'll have all these solid and down all right so needles, you know, it's it's one of those cuts where like you see the needles impaling and then it cuts to a mirrored shot of just the little twigs in the exact same position. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm, this will never do. <laughs> the blights of the forest, seemingly victorious, continue their relentless onslaught. Both of them now clawing at the only remaining survivor. Does a 14 hit you? No, it does not. All right. Obviously, an eight doesn't either. Now, Arton, if you're still with us, roll a death saving throw. Death save. Okay. That's just one d20. No. One d20. Ten or higher is good. Mods. Correct. And as far yeah. as I know, there isn't 18. a near death experience profession you can level up in. But that's a success, so we're good there. <laughs> that's a good suggestion, though. <laughs> we'll, we'll put we'll put that in the patch notes. <laughs> playing <Yeah>. possum. <laughs> All right. I don't think I'm playing. Which brings us back over to Taylor. There are three. There's a 
needle blight standing at the edge of the of the well it's a very very thick forest standing over at the edge and attacking from a distance and there's two twig blights directly upon you what do you do i pull out my smaller needle so i've got my big needle and my small needle i use my big needle on one of the twigs and my small needle on the other i got two swords that should be enough for all of you give me those attack rolls I like how the first encounter was some deer and the second <laughs> encounter is just going to kill everybody instantly. If the only survivor of today is Jet, I will not stop laughing. <laughs> and regrettably, neither an 11 nor 12 is going to be enough to hit. Oh no. Which takes us to the needle blight. Uh, now you have movement and a bone. No, you used your bonus action to do the second oh, stab. The second one, I should have actually been using my dexterity, so that should have been a 14 to hit. Mm, a 14 would hit, but you don't add your uh, damage, your ability modifier to the damage, right? Correct. But you do add your rage modifier. I, I actually will not, because I'm using my dexterity to attack with this, and rage Correct, only thank you. Extreme. Roll big number. Oh, that is not big number. That is small number. <laughs> That that is that is unfortunate. You had a twenty five percent chance to one shot this thing, and uh, that was not it. <clears throat> That's okay. all right. Still raging. Is there anything else you want to do? Anything else you want to just narrative? You want to throw on it? I basically just straddle the the uh, unconscious body of my compatriot at this point, and just take up a stance to protect them at all costs. Okay. Well. The needle blight lopes around, kind of when you see, uh, you know, Sasquatch or Bigfoot and really suspicious footage doing that loping thing, except bending a lot more and <laughs> moves a little bit, shifts around, and then appears from around a tree to fling more needles. Oh no! Um, <laughs> a natural one. Here's what I'm gonna. Here's what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to have you roll an opposed athletics check with one of the blights. And uh, you can have advantage on this. Because you're in oh, a yeah, rage. because I'm raging. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dirty 20. A dirty 20. Okay. Because as it's attacking in your raid, you just reach out and kick one of the smaller ones directly into the path of the attack. The one that I barely poked with my needle, I just mm -hmm. jab the needle in further and lift it up off the ground. It lifts up off the ground, blocking the attack, and now it's full of needles. It's got your sewing needle. It's got the needle <laughs> blights needles. It's dead. That's usually how I do critical fumbles. It's not instantaneously something bad happens to you. It's There's a second layer to it, a second challenge of some kind. Roll a deck save to not drop your sword sort of thing. All right. It's not even your turn, and you've cut them down to two targets, a needle blight and a vine blight. No. A twig blight and a needle blight. Sorry, I got my nice. plant life wrong. Okay, that which brings us back up to the sole survivor. The question is, do they have a sense of self-preservation, or do they just ruthlessly attack? Let's take a look here. Mm. Winnable. Winnable. <laughs> it's winnable. They haven't yeah. even touched me yet. Yeah, but, you know, they still outnumber you, and the battle can turn on a dime. And plus, this is the minion. It has to obey. And <laughs> yeah. it's going to obey by attempting to scratch your eyes out. A 13 does not hit, correct? Nope. Okay. Once again, with feeling, Arton, give me that death save. An eight. eight. You one have fail. one success and one failure. Mm. Hey, Lord. There's right. a twig blight directly up upon <coughs> you and a needle blight. Or, yeah, a needle blight. It's only 30 feet away, but it's through the undergrowth, underbrush and the, the thick, difficult terrain. Well, I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna first yank my small needle out of the one that just died. 
let mm-hmm. the pin cushion drop to the ground, and then I'm gonna use my big needle and try to attack the the close one. All right, roll it. A dirty twenty. That is absolutely, and you split this thing apart with a with a single furious blow. All four of the twig blights have been destroyed. The needle blight lopes thirty feet away through the undergrowth. What do you do? I just start rushing at it. Unfortunately, I can't ignore difficult terrain, mm-hmm. but my move speed is 40, so I'll move 20 feet toward it. Okay, you are now 10 feet away. Let's see. And the needle blight does ignore difficult terrain, and it's going to move 30 feet away from you, low. And now it's 40 feet from you instead of 10 feet. Uh, but I am going to give you cover on this attack because it has it doesn't have get to pick the angle of attack anymore. It has to just run away. So it's going to move that far and it's going to shoot more needles at you. A 16, does that hit? That meets, but question. Yes. And th- this is metagamey out of character question I'll, because I'll I've, I've played against Needle Blights before in Curse of Strahd. Mm-hmm. What's their attack range? 30, 60. So they would have had disadvantage so that, on that. But if a 16 meets with cover, it misses anyways, because that's plus two. Oh, yes, I forgot about that part. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's 40 feet away. It's your turn. You can reach it if you move in dash, if I'm correct. Yes. Okay. And if you don't make an attack with your main weapon attack, can you make an attack with your offhand attack? No, not with... Not if I'm just using two weapon fighting for that. Okay, so now you're in a position where it has, if it moves, it provokes an attack of opportunity. Yes, so I'm going to dash up close to it, but that will end my rage, I think, if I don't attack. Mm-hmm. Or do I, does it also stay if I get attacked? It attacked you and it missed. Let's see. If you end your turns and haven't attacked or taken damage. Okay, so, so your rage does come to an end. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to run at it and end my turn right next to it and yell at it as my rage ends. And the, <laughs> the, the vein in my forehead kind of calms down. I'm like, All right. Mm. I'm going to take you down, Mr. Tree. So if I use my action to withdraw, I get 30 feet away. You can move to close the distance. I can use my action to move away you move to close the distance. So theoretically, it could turn this into an endurance test. That is exactly what it's going to do. It's just going to start continuing to flee from you. Well, then I'm going to use my reaction to attack it. Well, it uses its action to disengage, and then it moves 30 feet away. Oh, okay. Ad infinitum. These things know how to disengage. You can choose to (laughs) pursue... Oh, you know what? I, I missed something. A death saving throw, please. 18. Two successes. One so, you can choose to pursue to see if you can outrun it. Wear it down. Distance, you know, endurance hunting. Uh, but you will leave your companion behind to an unknown fate and possibly in danger. But if you stop then- pursuing, it might just start taking pot shots at you again. Then after the first time it moves away, it would be like 70 feet away from where my companion fell. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then I would hide behind a tree and like break line of sight Mm -hmm. and hold my action to just make sure the tree stays between me and wherever it moves. Okay. It's 70 feet away. And it only has blind sight out to 60 feet, which means it loses track of you. Which means instead of doing the thing I was going to do where I was literally just going to kite you forever because (laughs) the monsters want to win, it is in fact going to sneak off into the forest moving and it can dash so it can move 60 feet through the difficult terrain. It is going to peel out of the fight. That was one last action which means I need another death saving throw. Two. You have two successes and you have two failures. And... Taylor is not close enough to make it back in one round. 
I am oh. going to say a prayer. <laughs> to do I, you, I, is hmm. your character religious? <laughs> uh not really religious, not practicing religious, just uh you know, the, the gods are there and sometimes they do us some favors. Okay. It's kind of like the Titus Pullo in HBO's Rome kind of thing talks directly to the gods specifically when they want something. Mm-hmm. Roll 1D100. My character? Yes, please. Oh, Lord. Yes, that's who we're trying to reach. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> another of you reached is currently busy on another line. Please check and dial again. Uh, this is something I, I didn't put in the lore summary that I need to. If you say the name of a deity once a day, there is a chance they hear you. What they do about them is up to them. Pestering them is not advised. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's see it. Here we go. I've moved my camera down so you all can see it. Come Here we on. Go. 13. Yes. I see two numbers there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's another thing I need to emphasize about Torn Lands. You can die. There is no plot armor. Lucky thir un yeah, lucky 13. Lucky number 13. So when you get back, it is. you find that uh, Artan is not dead. But, and here's the tricky thing. You're going to have to carry Artan through dense forest, unless you have some sort of healing, through dense forest uphill. <sighs> yep Marcel if uh, nobody came back for several hours let's say four hours what would you do continue working <laughs> <laughs> all right just keep track of like your four you he's have, honest you have four more hours just like note somewhere uh, we, we got to get a record system in place we're learning we're learning folks just know if I'm thinking logically, they left early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting them to be gone all day, looking right. around for people and doing things. Mm -hmm. So until like it, the sun starts to go down, Jet's not going to be worried. Okay. All right. Good enough for me. No reason to worry. The most dangerous thing we faced is a deer. What? What's the worst that could happen? It, see, I kind of thought there was a chance, right? Because I am running this fairly sandboxy. There is a chance that today could have just been. Oh no, haha, ha, it's a deer, and we explore and we find some stuff. Yay, see everyone next time. No, this is. Yeah, it do be like that. All right, so. It do be like that. Refresh me on the rules. Do you regain consciousness? No. I think but, they're stabilized, but unconscious. Correct. Okay. That is correct. You are not the only one, Kay, by the way, that has healing. I do have a healing spell. Yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> You're not here. I'm just not here. Yeah. Cool. Thematically cool. speaking, I figured I would take Cure Wounds as a character because my character has a lot of things blow up in his own face. So. That, that does make mm. sense. Okay. So, Taylor, here are your options. Navigate through the dense forest in the rain uphill both ways with... <laughs> an unconscious companion which is going to involve some navigation as well because yeah you've been marking trees and that will help a little bit but it's not you know perfect in the rain and such and hope you don't get lost or wait one to four hours at which point a stable creature regains one hit point and becomes conscious mm. This is a tough call. Taylor is going to start carrying Arton back. Okay. You oh you, you had the uh the protein heavy meal earlier today. That's oh yeah, good. that is great. <laughs> That's highly convenient. Okay. Yay, dear. All right. So what I'm going to have you do is I am going to have you roll. I would let you roll survival, but if you don't have survival, I'm just going to have you roll a flat explorer check or navigator check. So just a 1d20 and the DC got a little bit higher. If you fail, you are lost and you make no progress. 
for the first hour. Only if only I had some sort of inspiration of the bardic variety. <laughs> I don't need to use inspiration. <laughs> it's just some twig brambles. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So you spend an hour wandering around lost, and I'm gonna go ahead, Kaylin, go ahead and roll 1d4 to see how long it takes for you to regain consciousness. That's so cool. Get a one. Get one, a one. An interactive gameplay. <laughs> Two. <clears throat> okay. So, Marcel, for the record, you've had one hour of practice while they were doing all the fighting. Now you've had two hours of practice. I said you were going to get four, but that was before I looked up the 1d4 thing. All right. Make your second attempt to find your way out unless you change tactics, Taylor. <sighs> well, I didn't take any damage in the fight, so I'm going to still feel like I can... I can take on anything and continue to bra brave the wilderness. A 19. Okay. You do manage to find your way back. I am going to have you roll a constitution saving throw because it is difficult going. You will not accrue exhaustion, but you will accrue fatigue if you fail this. Okay. And uh, you're carrying somebody, so very much so, yes. Yeah. One second, I gotta find my. So I've buttons. gotten two hours. You said so you're gonna far, you're so gonna get go. three after this roll. You'll have three. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Uh, but the thing, is, let's see. So that's plus one. So that's plus one. So it, it, but but then you wake up. Okay. So after another hour of making your way up back that direction, Artan, you regain consciousness. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, good. I wasn't sure if you were dead or not. Huh? What happened? Well, I was going to go see if Mr. Businessman wanted to eat some uh, tabaxi for dinner. <laughs> I'm still alive. Oh, God. I'm really sad, you know. What? If you hadn't been unconscious, I could have brought home a pincushion. I had to carry you instead of the little pincushion that that tree made for me. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, oh, I kind of like feel the wound on my back that is just kind of there now uh, and go. Oh, boy. Um, question uh mm -hmm. can i use he can you use healing word on yourself or what does the target say creatures? what does the spell description say a creature of your choice that you can see within range regains hit points equal to 1d4 you are a creature and you can see yourself so yes yeah. i'm going to hold 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 on one second i see cast healing word on myself you oh, accidentally geez. cast power word kill deer and there's a terrified <laughs> bugle somewhere nearby in the forest <laughs> no you're good right. go ahead and roll um 1d4 plus three okay nice. Swing. all right i'm up to now eight hit points mm-hmm that's big. It is big out of 10. Yeah. That's almost half. It's, that's like barely over half mine. It's like I just, I was just scratched by the little twig blight, which is the only reason I went unconscious to the, you know, blight's attack. Fun fact. When blight's attack. Right now. All right. Thank you. Taylor, uh, thank you for keeping me. You know, safe. if you ever want to try ac you know, if you ever want to try like acupuncture like that, I have my own needles. Oh, I, I think I've gotten my my fair share of acupuncture. In it's supposed to make you feel good. Normally it How doesn't long knock it been? Well, you were only out for like uh well, I don't know why I'm looking at my wrist. Uh, like five hours, I think. 
Five hours? I don't know how to tell time. The sun's barely moved. I don't you know why up I'm looking see... up. I also don't know how to tell time. <laughs> it's it's also dense ancient forest and <laughs> raining. So there's just this vague glow barely making its way down. Like technically, if you have dark vision right now, low light vision, you're using it. That's why I couldn't it's find raining. my way out of the forest. <laughs> Man, five hours. Um, yeah, we should probably get back. Uh, yeah, he might yeah. be getting worried. You know, he does seem like the type to, you know, care about his companions. I'm sure, like, he's just ready and raring to come find us. The camera flashes back to me <laughs> whistling, whistling as I'm uh, <laughs> creating a contraption to keep the fire under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> smash cut to like two figures that you've just made one says Arton, one says Taylor and it's like ah just like before uh, yeah we haven't, that's, uh, he's named that's the beetles that he caught earlier <laughs> so I don't know on. I don't think the Tome of Trades has rules for how long it takes you to go full Wilson <laughs> Arton Arton, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Arton. Uh, we should. We should get back. I've I've healed myself, but I, ooh, I I do not want to. I I've had my fair share of adventuring for the day. I'd like to go home and play my loot and not get shot in the back anymore. All right. Yeah. If our heroes be thusly resolved, navigation remains difficult and the climb remains strenuous. No, you you ascended the climb already. Navigation remains difficult. I will have each of you, you can combine your efforts unless one of you wants to be harvesting resources at the same time. If you both navigate, both of you roll a explore, so just a flat D20 for uh, navigation. And we'll take the better of the two. Tragic, really. Well, the good news is you're gaining experience in, I think, navigation. Uh, and even better, Marcel, you have another hour. So you've had like, <laughs> this is your fifth hour. And give me I'm another so roll. Uh, I was I was reading a message about my experience points. What's up? You got more experience points. Okay, so <laughs> how many do I have total for this endeavor that they went on? You should have five. Five. All right, give me another navigation check. I'm just lo noting in my log, wander around lost. Okay. It is two more hours. You make it. It takes two more hours just because of the prevailing conditions, which means that you should come out to a total of seven, Marcel. So, like, they're gone for seven hours, at which point they finally return. I am, like, literally just starting to worry as I hear their voices, and I just it just kind of goes away immediately as I hear their voices approaching. And you, you may uh, reconvene at the camp however you'd like. Oh, there you are. Took you long enough. You yeah, this one almost people? died. What? Yeah, there, there are some trees. What do you mean you almost died? There are some trees. Oh, well, lots of trees. How did you die to a tree? You're a cat. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. You look like shit. Come, 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 sit. It's. I, I've started the fire back up, and uh, hopefully this will keep it going longer. And you see, like a rudimentary kind of. Um, I've I've folded up pieces of leaves and things to kind of try and create a little little teepee around the fire to keep it from making a lot of smoke, but it is working. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you did a great job. It's going to last right. for so long now, we might even be able to put our feet next to it as we sleep. That is, if we want the fire to be on while we sleep. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's not dangerous in a forest. Hey, you know what they say about the sunrise? No, what do they say? He just goes back to work and it doesn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, barring anything else, that is the perfect place to cut this. Did anybody have anything else? <laughs> 
No. Okay. I am going to award uh I'm going to award Taylor and Artan 50 experience points each because you took the fight. Yep. Hell yeah. That's totally fair. Yep. And you you get your survival XP that you farmed up. Yep. And that character is obviously uh, not as much of a combat oriented character anyway, so mm -hmm. it makes sense. And I didn't expect that, so I am sorry that I wasn't there, but you know, it is what it, it is. It, as long as You're you <laughs> weren't unhappy with your choices and you weren't bored, I'm fine with it. Nah, and the I rest of the party is insulty about almost dying. That's, you know, that, I can't control that. Yep. I didn't almost die. <laughs> well, the... I don't have a lot invested in this character right now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I dearly lost her. And so the camera zooms out from this rudimentary shelter, which is almost immediately swallowed up as it goes higher and higher above the tree line, vanishing almost entirely pulling back further and further and further. And the last thing we see in the open field where the standing stones and that ancient mysterious language surround it are a couple more figures appearing out of nowhere and stirring upon the grass. And that's going to conclude our inaugural expedition in Tornlands. Thank you so much to the three of you for joining us. Uh, I hope that you had fun. The adventure is going to continue offline as every day that passes is another day that passes and you can continue to try to build up your shelter, try to burn down the forest, so on and so forth. Other content creators who are involved will be able to launch expeditions as well. And we're going to be doing this all the way through April uh, in support of the Tome of Trades launch. The Kickstarter is on March 14th. So once again, thank you to all my guests. Thank you to Gaskini Games for setting us up with this. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Take care. Thank you.